Welcome to week five of Classical Mechanics 2. This week, we're going to start talking about the calculus of variations and Lagrangians. This will begin our unit on Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. Lagrangians and Hamiltonians are great because they're really the bread and butter of what a lot of research physicists do. Here are an example of several things that I work on. These images here on the left are images of different soap films. So here you have two boundaries that are circular, and you can get two types of soap films that live on this. One that sort of spans either side, just as disks, or you can have this really interesting one that has curves in the center here. And this surface here is known as the catenoid. This is a type of minimal surface. These are surfaces that soap films make because soap films want to minimize their surface area. This is an example of the QTZ, QZD surface that my student Shashank Markande worked on parametrizing. And this is a video from a project that I worked on with Remy Coulon, Henry Segerman, and Steve Treadle. This project explored what it would be like to live in three-dimensional curved spaces using real-time rendering. The principle behind this is that light rays in any space follow the shortest distance between an object and your eye. So these paths are called geodesics, and I will get to those two videos from now. The branch of math that we use to study this type of problem is called the calculus of variations. So imagine here I have the xy plane. I've got a point here, point A, and x1, y1, and the point here at B is equal to x2, y2. So we'd like to minimize the length of a path that goes from point A to point B. So mathematically speaking, what we want to do is minimize the length L of the path between A and B. We know this is a straight line. But in this setting of the problem, I can have any path I'd like. We would like to figure out which path of all possible paths is going to give us the minimum distance between A and B. So let's call these paths Y of X. So what is the length of these paths? So the length of these paths is the integral from X1 to X2 of the square root of 1 minus y prime squared dx. And we'd like to figure out how do we minimize this length here, L. L is what we call a functional. A functional is a scalar valued function where the independent variable is a function. So here, this y in square brackets is this arbitrary function. We're trying to minimize the function line. We're not trying to extremize to find a number like we do in a single variable calculus, but we're trying to extremize to find the ideal function. And note, we always use square brackets to denote that something is a functional. In the calculus of variations, we always want to minimize some functional. So let's say i as a functional of y is equal to the integral from some alpha to some beta of our functional f, which is itself a function of y of x, y prime of x, x, and we're integrating over dx. So here we have functions y of x and the variable y. This functional f is often something like an energy. So for instance, in the soap film example, the energy would be surface tension, which is surface area times some energy per unit area. And that's the thing we're trying to minimize. The goal is to find a function y that minimizes this functional i. Let's talk about how we might like to make this idea mathematically rigorous. So imagine I have my points A and B, and there is some solution. And let's call that solution y of x. And to this solution, I'm going to add a tiny perturbation to it here. This curve is going to be y of x plus 
delta y of x. And delta y is going to be this function down here, and it has the property that delta y at point A is equal to zero and delta y at point B is equal to zero. Delta i is going to be i of y plus delta y minus i of y. If y of x minimizes i of y, then in the limit that delta y goes to zero, delta i is equal to zero. Delta i is going to be the integral from alpha to beta of f of y plus delta y, y prime plus delta y prime, and x minus f of y, y prime, and x, all integrated over x. Let's recall how we might expand out this term here. Imagine I've got some function g of x plus delta x and y plus delta y, and I'd like to expand these for small delta x and delta y. Basically, we're doing a Fourier series expansion, but now we've got two variables. So the first term is going to be g of x plus y. Then we've got a term that's linear in delta x with the coefficient dg by dx. Then the next order term is 1 half d squared g by dx squared, delta x squared. We can expand these in terms of y as well. We could include higher order terms, but this is going to be sufficient for our purposes here. Getting back to our delta i, we have uh, f of y, y prime, and x, and we'll keep the terms in the expansion up to linear order. We've got df by dy, delta y, plus df by dy prime, delta y prime, minus f of y, y prime, and x. You'll notice that these two terms cancel, and we're left with this term here. So the integral from alpha to beta, df by dy times delta y of x, plus df by dy prime, delta y prime of x dx. And this is equal to zero, since delta i is equal to zero. So now we're going to figure out what to do about this term here. We have our integral delta i and these terms that are linear in delta y and delta y prime. And what we're going to do is first look at this term and integrate it by parts. We've got the integral from alpha to beta of df by dy prime delta y prime dx. And delta y prime we can write as d delta y by dx. Just a small aside when we work with these problems, you'll note that these are d's because delta y is only a function of x. And partial derivatives over here, what I'm doing is I'm treating f as if it's a function with three independent variables. One is y, one is y prime, and the other is x. So here I would be using a partial derivative sign. Now we want to integrate this by parts. Let me substitute in this definition for delta y prime. We've got df by dy prime times d delta y by dx. And we're going to integrate this by parts. So we've got u times dv is equal to uv evaluated at our boundary conditions minus the integral of v times du. So first off, you'll note that the terms over here vanish because the definition of delta y evaluated at either of the boundary points is equal to zero. We're left with just minus d by dx of df by dy prime delta y and that will go in place up here. So our total delta i is now this integral here. So we've got the integral from alpha to beta of df by dy minus d by dx df by dy prime times delta y dx. 
or equivalently, I can write down what we call the Euler-Lagrange equation as merely df by dy minus d by dx of df by dy prime is equal to zero.